Hey, congratulations, you guys, on the film. You know, I know this has been a labor of love, really, for both you guys. Yeah. Uh, James, you've been at this uh, since 2003. Yeah, since 2002, actually. Oh, I, 2002. I, I first, I thought, I've said in early interviews I wrote in 2003, I went back and looked at the first draft. I actually wrote the first draft on uh, April 2nd, 2002, exactly nine years minus one day from the day we're opening in theaters. Wow. Yeah. No. Dude, what, what took you guys so long to, to get it to where it is now? Uh, you know, for me, one thing is I had financing for this movie about five years ago, but I couldn't find the right lead actor who would fit the role. Lots of Hollywood actors wanted to do it, but I needed somebody who was, you know, physically powerful enough to believe he could kick ass, who was, you know, goofy looking enough that you could believe he was picked on in the diner by his fellow cook, mm -hmm. who could handle the dramatic part, who could handle the, the comedic part. And um, a couple, you know, years ago, my ex-wife, Jenna Fisher, called me and said, what do you think of Rain? And it was like, bam, perfect. Um, so that's when Rain came on board. Now, now is it true, Rain, that, that when you came on, there really wasn't any financing in place? So it was kind of like you guys going out and hitting the pavement. Yeah, it, it, it really was. I mean, when, you know, Jenna Fisher, you know, Pam from the office, you know, kind of put the ball into motion, I called James. I was like, I love this script. I, I went to my agents and I, and I was like, I need to make this movie. I have to do it. And we have to get this done. And it really was hitting the pavement. It really was like trudging down to financing houses and producers' offices and say, here's our script. Here's how we want to do it. This is how we see it. Um, here's the kind of people we could attach. And um, it was it was tough. I mean, this was about two years ago, two and a half years ago, and the economy was just tanked. And independent film was, was really in a rough in, in a rough state. And it, it was a lot of work. Now, you've got, you, you've got a great cast. Um, you know, Ellen and Liv and, and Kevin, did did they come aboard because of maybe relationships that you guys had with them, or was it? I heard Ellen say that she read the script and just like fell in love with it. But well, I, for Ellen, we, we we had a meeting, we had a casting meeting, and we were literally sitting there scratching our heads, going, "Okay, so we need an Ellen Page type for the role of Libby. Who can we get?" And we had this list of all of these young actresses that just weren't quite as good as Ellen Page. And I was like, you know, I know her from Juno. I have her email address. Let's send it to her. And fortunately, she flipped for it. And she really makes the movie. She had a great meeting with James. And um, and and Liv was the same way. Um, we were like, we need a kind of a, a beautiful fallen angel that we could believe is a drug addict. And, uh, and Liv Tyler fit that description perfectly. And uh, then we were cooking with gas. But even then... Even then, it was really hard to get our measly few million dollars together to make the movie. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I think that, you know, <laughs> trying, trying to get the, the, the money to make this, this movie, was, you know, it is really sort of like killing a cockroach with a bazooka. Right. Because we kept adding another big name, another big name, another big name, but still people were afraid of financing it because Super really is a very extreme film. It's very different. You know, there's violence and sex and black humor and all sorts of crazy stuff in the movie and for a studio it's just not a studio film right it's not a film for everybody it's a, a film for you know the oddballs the rebels the outcasts the geeks out there and um it's uh, something that people seem to love now that it's actually been made but man the road to getting it made was it was really difficult i i, I would think yeah the studios would be going well, how, what do we, you know, how do we do? What do we do with this? Yeah, yeah how do you how do you sell how it? Do you is sell this, it? Is this yeah. like Blank Man? Is this, you know, is this Mystery Man? Is right. It, you know, can we make it more like this? Can we make it more like that? And the one thing was, is I've made a, you know, a lot of big, you know, popular movies, and on this one, I felt like it was something I was really doing with my heart. I felt a calling to make this movie. And so the one thing I wanted to, do, what I just want to say, I want to interrupt this. Because one thing that James did in the pitch meetings, which was brilliant, you know how you always say, like, it's this meets this when you describe a movie? James went into meetings and would say, it's Napoleon Dynamite meets Taxi Driver. <laughs> and I kind of thought that was the perfect description of the movie. That is <laughs> awesome. Well, that is what and it you're is. You're right. Yeah, you know, it, you're right. Yeah. I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's, it is. It's like it's light, but it's also dark. And, you know, we were able to switch back and forth between these two things. But, but I knew that if we made this movie, we had to go all the way with it. This was not a movie to almost make what it is. You either don't make it or you go all the way with it because the nature of Super itself is an extreme film. And if it's not extreme, then it does become a watered-down version like a lot of other movies you've seen before. And that's why you had to come out unrated. 
that's why we came out unrated, yeah. and that's why you know we're we're doing everything in the way we are. We're going into to, you know not all the theaters in the world, some theaters, um, but because we made the film for such a low budget with the amazing cast that we have, and because people seem to like the movie so much, it's a way to actually you know make our budget back, which is which is rare these days when you're making movies. Right. Right. You know, it seems like this is the perfect time for this type of movie to come out anyway, because there, all of a sudden, there's this superhero type movement. You know, like, like the guy, the cats up in uh, up in Seattle. Yeah, Rain and I actually were in Seattle at the, the Emerald City Comic Con, and Phoenix Jones interrupted our press conference to come up and talk to us. And, and Rain, you, you interviewed Phoenix. Yeah. That was now, for, for those of you who don't know, know. Yes, for those of you yeah. who don't know, Phoenix Jones is a, a real life vigilante superhero. He has a giant superhero costume and mask. It's kind of rubberized and kind of thick like a body armor. And he walks around dangerous neighborhoods in Seattle and tries to prevent crimes. And he's got a little. He's been stabbed. Yeah. He's had his nose broken. He's really been messed up a lot. And the cops don't like him because he's really getting in. They think of, he's getting in their way. Yeah, I mean, could you imagine? I mean, basically, that's what James always says. Is that's what Batman does. He drives around looking for bad guys and, and <laughs> kicks the crap out of them. But do we really want that? And that's one of the, it was one of the things that, that Super explores is that, that fine line between um, hero and vigilante and sociopath. Yeah, between having a calling and being crazy. You know, which is it? Is it both? And I, and I think in a way, like Rain and I, making this movie, we felt a calling to make this movie. Right. But at times, we felt totally insane. I mean, people thought we were crazy for wanting to make this movie. It's like, you know, you guys both have really good careers going. You're going to go out and, and do this thing to yourselves? It's like, the, you know, watching the guys that flog themselves. Because it's, it's a very different movie. These type of movies, though, have to be made because we get bogged down with so much stuff. I, mean, I don't want to call it crap, but you know, there's only so many special effects that we can see. So it's well, cool to get a movie where there's a story. I know? think the superhero genre needs a lot of reinvention, and I think that's why you see a lot of kind of subversive, comic book style movies because, you know, they just the graphic novels and comic books themselves, at their best, can be very dark, really psychological, and and intense character studies that have beautiful visuals at the same time. And you'd, you'd think that would translate perfectly to movies, but it very, very rarely does. And usually because a studio just wants to make sure it gets enough teenage boys in to sell enough tickets and sell enough popcorn to make it profitable, so they just put in a ton of explosions and cool gadgets. But they leave out the, the underbelly of the, of the superhero story, which is a kind of a myth. So there's a, there's a mythic element to super. You know, what is it for a, a regular guy to be called to become a superhero and to fight evil however he can. Um, is, he in, is he a madman, or, or, or is that something we should all aspire to? Or is it just, the, you know, I always see it as the kid inside of us that, that, that wants to be a magical superhero. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, we all have that kid inside of us that wants to be a superhero, and in Super, we're kind of seeing that played out yeah. in a real way, and it's not, you know, like most dreams come true. Um, you know, you know, Rain can tell you from becoming, uh, you know, going from being a non-famous person to a famous person. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be famous, and being famous is not always the most fun thing in the world. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, I think that one of the things is, you know, and I love big action movies. I love big superhero movies. It's just that that's not what this is. I mean, I think one of the problems with movies today is every single film that comes out is trying to be everything to everyone, and sometimes it works. Iron Man, it works. Mm -hmm. Toy Story Three, it worked. But very few films does it work. And I miss those movies from the 1970s when you could go see a good drama that was based towards, you know, an, an older female generation. Or you could go see a Western that was based towards young men. Or you could go see, you know, a, a black, you know, t raunchy comedy that was based towards, you know, teenagers. And today you don't see much of that. You mm -hmm. see everything for everybody. And Super is really trying to get to those people who both want to have a great time and see a very entertaining movie, but also want to think while they're doing it and maybe feel a little something more than what other people do. And also, and I think more than anything else, it's a movie where you don't know what's going to happen around every corner. You know, I think a lot of people find it comforting to see a movie where they go and they know what the beats are going to be from A to B to C to D. It's, it's, like, it's like comfort food. It's like eating macaroni and cheese. And Super, that's not comforting at all. It's the opposite, because you do not know what's going to happen from scene to scene to scene.